there's no team that can match Georgia, Alabama. And then now you have LSU coming up. What's up guys, John back with another video. And today is the first episode of our college football talk show where I kind of give my opinion on the current state of college football. So I am not a stats guy, so forgive me if my stats are a little bit off or not. Uh, I just want to give my opinion on certain things. So if you guys want to jump in and the comments and kind of let me know the stats for or certain uh, little, you know, little details, please let me know down in the comments so I can go and check it out and then answer you guys that way. So today we're gonna talk about the Power Five conferences and how they should be ranked going into the 2023-2024 season. So I'm gonna start off with like certain criteria. So I'm gonna look at how many bowl games each conference has won last season and number two how many of the top returning starters are coming back for each conference so we're going to start off with those two criteria keep it simple today and uh, we're going to have some fun let's get into it so first one we're going to start in alphabetical order first one we have the acc so the acc went five and four in the conference bowl games last season with a per winning percentage of 55.6%. So that's relatively good. That means that um, out of the nine teams that actually showed up in the bowl games, five of them won. So not a bad record uh, considering the ACC wasn't that strong last season. Okay, the next one, this one kind of threw me in for a loop because, um, and it's a little bit skewed, but everyone said that the Big 12 was very deep and I totally agree with them on that. But the problem is they had the worst winning percentage of out of all the top five conference, power conferences uh, with 22.2%. So they had eight teams that actually went to a bowl, bowl game. And the record was two and seven. And the seventh game that they lost was uh, TCU losing to a Georgia in the national championship. So um, that's why I'm saying it's a little bit skewed because Georgia overwhelmingly de destroyed TCU. So um, that, I feel is a little bit skewed. It can be like two and six, but regardless, two and seven, very bad, poor showing by the Big 12. Let's move on to the next um, conference, the Big 10. Now the Big 10 always does pretty well in bowl games. Um, this year or this last season uh, was an average, I'd say, um, average to a better, you know, I, I feel showing by the Big Ten for meaning Ohio State and uh, Michigan, the top two teams in the league actually uh, went up there and, um, you know, played some really good football. So out of the nine Big Ten teams that went to conference bowl games, uh, they came out with a five and four record, which is uh, same, uh, similar to the ACC with a 55.5% winning percentage. Let's move on to the Pac-12. All right, now the Pac-12, I feel, is a little bit, you know, a little bit iffy, if you, if you guys get what I mean. I was expecting USC to actually dominate against Tulane, but they were whooped by Tulane, like it was such a good game that, and if you guys haven't seen it, make sure you guys watch my reaction to that. But um, Pac-12 is a little bit deceiving. Uh, they do have a lot of top heavy teams, but um, considering USC, UCLA moving to the Big 10 in 2024, um, I see it becoming um, a relatively mediocre league and it, it's kind of starting to be like that. Um, but I expect the Pac-12 to do decent in the next season. So out of the seven teams that showed up in the bowl games, they came 
came out with a three and four record, which is a winning percentage of 42.9%. So that was pretty bad showing by the Pac-12. So let's move on to the next one, the SEC, the mighty SEC. So they had the most teams showing in uh, all of the conferences with 11 teams, which is ridiculous amount of teams. And I would say they had the best uh, winning percentage as well uh, in, in terms of the power, you know, five with a 58.3% winning percentage. They went seven and five uh, with uh, out of those 11 teams. And then obviously Georgia winning the national title. So that uh, is an overview of all the you know power five conferences and so let's let's get into like the nitty-gritty so the weakest power five conference i would have to say is the pac-12 and the reason is because their top teams utah and usc both lost to penn state number 11 penn state um and tulane and i get that caleb williams is coming back but with Caleb Williams, even though they had him, they still lost to Tulane by a point, which isn't too bad. Tulane actually played their hearts out in that game, and um, Caleb Williams dominating uh, throughout the season, and I, I expect him to do you know even better next season. So I, I feel like although um, there are some standouts, like Washington actually did really well, uh, they beat Texas in the Alamo Bowl, 27 to 20. So they had some really great teams. Um, Oregon kind of pulled away against North Carolina with a one-point win in the Holiday Bowl. Um, but Oregon's always Oregon. So the point is the top teams, UCLA, Utah, Oregon, Washington, all did pretty good good like half the teams did well half the teams didn't do so well so that's why i have them at number five all right coming in at number four we have the acc now besides you know a lot of people talk about clemson um being the best team in the acc well they got destroyed by tennessee 31 to 14 in the orange bowl um and that is the top team in the ACC last season. I see Florida State moving up in the rankings as well as North Carolina. North Carolina, for some reason, always disappointing in the postseason. But during the season, they have their ups and downs. Drake made phenomenal freshman play in the last season. I expect him to return and also, you know, put up amazing numbers and possibly you know, give Caleb Williams a run for his money for the Heisman Trophy. Now, Pittsburgh also did a really good job as well as NC State. So those are the top teams to kind of look out for. Wake Forest and Louisville did also a great job in winning the Gasparilla Bowl and the Fenway Bowl against Missouri and Cincinnati. So they both did pretty well. Um, surprisingly, Duke blew out UCF. And UCF's going to Big 12 next season. So I I was surprised by that. But overall, I feel like the ACC is kind of a mediocre, you know, uh, at, at beating themselves. But when it comes to, like, tougher competition, like, against the SEC, forget it. Like, they can't compete right now. So I also see them as number four. At the middle of the list, we have number three, Big 12. Now, the Big 12, I feel, even though they had the worst bowl record, their conference was pretty deep last season. So I expect um, Kansas State to come back, TCU to come back, um, and it looks like Texas is kind of getting up there again with Archie Manning and uh, Quinn Ewers battling for the... QB position this past week. So I expect them also to step up. Oklahoma, <laughs> I don't know. You guys debate whether Oklahoma is going to have a good season or not. I, everyone thought they were going to have a great season coming in last year, but they ended up having a very bad season. So um, I feel like the teams to watch in the Big 12 next season are TCU, Kansas State, 
and um, I would say Texas. Texas almost beat Alabama last season, so they, if they can get their stuff together, they're they're forced to be reckoned with. So I have number three, the Big Twelve. Coming in at number two, I have put the Big Ten as number two. The reason is because their bowl season, bowl record, is always pretty good. They have two of the top teams in Michigan and Ohio State, both doing pretty well uh, in the postseason. And I feel like Penn State's coming up. Um, actually, there's a lot of decent teams. Uh, Wisconsin's probably going to have a great, great season next season. Um, and... I feel like Illinois also is picking up on their defense, um, so they, 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 you know, there's a lot of teams that can kind of um, flip. It's like a side of corn. Like Iowa's, I feel like my team Iowa is going to have a better season next season because of better quarterback play. So if you guys didn't know, Cade McNamara from Michigan transferred over to Iowa. So definitely excited to see some gunslinging back for the Hawkeyes, as well as Eric All from Michigan, the tight end, uh, which I me mean, is pretty good, but I was known for developing tight ends, so maybe, you know, he might get a chance to shine for Iowa instead. So Iowa's one of those, like, tip of the edge, flip of the coin kind of teams that I feel like they're going to have a better season uh, next season. Uh, surprisingly, Maryland beat NC State in the Duke's Mayo Bowl. So, you know, NC State being one of the top teams in the ACC, but Maryland, mediocre Maryland, still beat them soundly, I would say. And then you have the rest of the league. Um, Purdue might, might be having another down season. I don't see them having um, a too good season next season because uh, a lot of guys went to the NFL. Uh, Minnesota the same, and of course Nebraska, those teams I feel like aren't gonna, you know, they're still kind of build, rebuilding. So I have the Big Ten as number two. And at the top of the list, uh, what do you know? We have the SEC at number one, and this is no surprise to anyone, uh, no surprise to me, just dominating. I mean, no one's, it's just Georgia and then Maybe Alabama and then everyone else <laughs> in the college football uh, world. I, I just feel like there is, I just, there, there, I, there's no level that can, there's no team that can match Georgia, Alabama. And then now you have LSU coming up, you know, uh, with uh, Jaden Daniels, who I feel is going to have a great season. If he doesn't get injured, great season next season. Um, and they're just going to, you know, roll over people. So those are my top three teams uh, for SEC. Florida, I feel, is kind of on the rebuilding phase. I see Tennessee being rounding up that top four spot. And then that's it, because I feel like everyone else is a mediocre Um because, okay, Kentucky lost to Iowa, zero. They didn't even score and um, with their new quarterback. So I just feel like they're going to have a rebuilding um, phase. South Carolina, dis uh, very disappointing. I, I mean, they ended the season blowing out Clemson, but then losing to Notre Dame. And the Gator Bowl, so I feel like that that was kind of um, that was kind of like down. Ole Miss, I don't know what happened. They always let you down in the in the postseason. They lost twenty five to forty two against Texas Tech in the Texas Bowl, and um, Arkansas, Arkansas man, hey KJ Jefferson's coming back. But I don't know if he's going to have uh, Rocket Sanders back. I have no idea. But they barely beat Kansas, 55 to 53 overtime in the Liberty Bowl. So I just feel like those teams are kind of flip of the coin. And they're just going to be, you know, doing their regular. I, I don't see them actually uh, increasing their record. I feel like it, more of the same. They're gonna stay about that, you know, seven to five, seven and five, maybe um, eight and four range. 
So those are the top teams rounding off the SEC. So there you guys have it, a short little video displaying what I think way too early <laughs> power rankings for my college football power five conferences. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys agree or disagree and give me your reasons why. And we can give a discussion, get it going. How do you guys like my new setup? You know, all this stuff. Give me some ideas you guys want to talk about and I will do my best to talk about it for the summer. Make sure to like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.